A young billionaire watches his life change drastically over the course of just one day as he searches for answers. Cosmopolis was directed by David Cronenberg, one of my personal favorite directors. Uh, it stars Robert Pattinson, uh, Kevin Durant, Juliette Binoche, uh, Sarah Gadon, and Paul Giamatti. Despite being a big Cronenberg fan, and I am, uh, this movie was never really on my radar until literally maybe just a couple years ago. Obviously, you know, Cronenberg's most known for his 80s horror output, uh, you know, classics like Videodrome and The Fly and obviously a, a solid handful of others. But the 90s, you know, kind of saw him branching out into like other territories, you know, to varying amounts of success. And admittedly, I find most of his post-80s output very hit or miss, as much as I hate to admit that. And, and I gotta be honest, you know, this is probably my least favorite of his films that I've seen so far, um, and I've seen almost all of them. I Honestly, I found it nearly unwatchable. The story centers around uh, Eric Packer, played by Robert Pattinson. Uh, you know, he's a 28-year-old asset manager whose entire existence, you know, revolves around money and how to make more of it. So the theme here is definitely capitalism, and I'll be honest, this script is, is probably just way too smart for me. So please take everything I say here with a huge, huge, huge fucking grain of salt. And like with all of my reviews, or really anyone else's reviews, you know, for that matter, I encourage you to watch, you know, watch this stuff for yourself, whether you see good or bad reviews. This film is very satirical and kind of like fantasy-like. Uh, it feels very much to me like a, uh, like a stage play, and it is actually an adaptation of a 2003 novel written by Don DeLillo. Eric spends much of his days in his limo. I mean, he, he conducts business in it, gets daily medical exams in it, bangs women in it. Who knows what else? And he's had a weird day. There, there are anti-capitalist protests where he lives in Manhattan and his limo's being like consistently vandalized. And he is facing some serious uh, business related uh, financial losses and his wife is leaving him and all he wants is a haircut from his favorite barber. This all sounds like, you know, a decent script for an entertaining movie, right? The beginning starts with a, a great shot, uh, with the camera kind of panning down a line of limousines, kind of at an angle. Um, this is the look of a veteran old school filmmaker, and you don't see that every day anymore. Kevin Durand plays Eric's head of security, and uh, his New York accent uh, has to be inspired by Christopher Walken. Uh, that said, you know, Kevin's a good actor, and, and he, he's good here, like he always is. None of the dialogue is easy to follow, and I found that to be really off-putting. Uh, it, it isn't the way normal people talk, and I get it. It, it is by design. Tonally, uh, this film kind of reminds me of Stu Stuart Gordon's uh, Edmund from 2005, although you know that movie, to me, was much more entertaining. The first two acts here are, for me, just a total slog. Uh, the dialogue, again, is cold and robotic, and it makes it so hard to follow, especially in a dialogue-driven film. The look and aesthetics of the film are interesting, though. It's set in modern-day Manhattan, but when Eric isn't in his limo, he's often in, you know, buildings that look like, uh, you know, places he wouldn't necessarily belong in. Like old-looking diners and apartment buildings, um, even his barber shop, uh, you know, that he goes to looks right out of the 1950s. There's likely some symbolism there, you know, maybe showing a dichotomy of sorts, the wealthy and the working class. The third act is, is slightly more interesting, but, you know, for me, the, the barrier remained and I just couldn't get past it. That said, you, you get a very interesting performance from Paul Giamatti. Uh, by far the best performance of, you know, of the film, in my opinion, but that's the, you know, the problem is that, you know, the dialogue he delivers, he delivers with a lot of passion and intensity, but that that same dialogue, it's just it it didn't grab me, and it almost it almost made the performance just feel kind of wasted. Robert Pattinson's good here. Uh, you know, I've always rooted for him. Oh, you know, or at least since he escaped the fate that could have been the Twilight series, the Twilight Saga. So as Eric's life spirals out of control and he searches for a solution, we we get a, a pretty vague, ambiguous ending. This is, I suppose, you know, open to interpretation and was neither satisfying nor disappointing for me. 
And I do have to say that I, I, I respect David Cronenberg for this undertaking. Uh, it was a bold and risky move, and it did not pay off. It brought in $7 million at the box office against a $20 million budget, and I, I can't say that I'm surprised. Some critics, I mean, thoroughly loved it, but many did not. And I imagine that, you know, like me, many people just either didn't fully understand it or couldn't get into it, maybe even both. And I'm definitely in both camps, to be honest. So I'm giving Cosmopolis a 5.5 uh, out of 10. This was an endurance test for me, and, and I'll... I will never watch this again, I don't think. Uh, I wanted to give it a lower score, to be honest, but it is a well-made film, and it wouldn't have been fair. I'd love to hear from people that uh, that do love this one, uh, and maybe they could tell me why, because who knows, you know, maybe I'm just really missing something. That said, I, I can't give my personal recommendation for this really to anybody. Cheers, guys.